hello guys so welcome again to my channel in this video i will discuss how to visualize the tension field method okay if you are associate with steel design in that case i think you have encountered this term that is your tension field method it uh, quite complex in detail the calculation is quite complex i will not going into the calculation i will only discuss how to visualize what is actually this means that means what is your tension field method okay so tension field method is nothing but you have to find truss within a beam or girder okay so how to find this truss and why you have to find this truss before discussing in detail please do subscribe this channel if you are new to this channel because definitely in future you are going to be benefited okay so let's find truss within your girder or visualize the tension field method okay so the very first thing what is the effect of load you know that if you apply any load on any beam there is two thing first one is your shear and second one is your bending okay so what is a shear look like so for that if you draw a shear force diagram it is something like this one okay so shear force is acting each and every section clear and bending moment diagram is something like this one okay so this is bending moment diagram and this is your shear force diagram so this is the effect of any load clear now next part how shear is resisted of course by some material and how bending moment is resisted by some material simple answer now in case of a any beam or girder where the girder is a i section simply a i section like this one okay the cross section is i section the shear is resisted through this web but no doubt and the bending moment is resisted through this flange part clear next is what is truss or in case of truss how the shear and bending moment are catered simply you know that in case of bending moment uh, this bending moment is nothing but a couple okay if this is the moment then there is a compression and there is a tension so in truss this top cord takes the compression and this bottom cord takes the tension okay and for this inclined member there is shear force okay so if any section there is let's say in this section there is a shear force okay so this shear force or this shear force is counteracted by this inclined member okay so in truss your shear is carried out through this inclined member and bending moment is carried through this top cord and bottom cord clear so we have cleared out our conception about beam and truss okay both in beam or girder or in case of a truss how this shear and bending moment are catered you have understood clear now just assume you have a girder okay and in this girder let's say this is your girder okay now in this girder the wave part this wave is very thin what you have to do you have to simply provide the stiffener clear so now after applying this stiffener look what happen once you apply this stiffener within this girder what will happen as usual in case of a i section what happen the bending moment are catered through these flanges clear because the stress distribution in bending moment is like this one so majority of stress is distributed through your flange and the shear as usual they pass through the web but in this case the shear pass through the stiffener because the web is very much uh, thin so what will happen simply the web will buckle under this compressive load or any shear that's why you have provided the stiffener okay now in a stiffened girder 
to transfer the load what you have used you have simply used two things first one is you have used the flange part to carry the bending moment and this stiffener to carry the shear force okay now the question is what happened to the wave your wave is very thin so what happened to them okay they simply what happened to the wave they are subject to your panel shear so what is panel shear just uh, cut out any particular zone this one okay so this part has two stiffener two flanges okay so now if i draw this one uh, more elaborately like this one okay so this is the flange part this is the flange part and uh, this is stiffener and this is one stiffener so this stiffener carry the shear force like this one okay like this one and this shear force has some complementary part like this one okay so what happened the resultant of this shear force is tension clear and this one in this direction the resultant is compression so this wave is compressed in this direction and tensioned in this direction okay in this direction it is tensioned clear so now if you visualize the force flow it looks something like this one okay you have applied the load okay just let me draw you have applied the load here here is the support here is the support so the effect of load is bending moment and shear force the bending moment are transferred through this flanges no doubt and shear force are transferred through this stiffener in between these two stiffener what happened the wave either it is compressed as i have drawn here uh, in between these two stiffener this wave is either tensioned or compressed okay based on the direction of your shear force uh, if this is the shear force the complementary shear force look like this one okay so now the tensile force is acting along this okay and compressive force is acting along this direction clear so based on the shear force your girder become tensioned or your the wave part of your girder become tensioned just like this picture okay now based on this theory or based on this concept if you design this girder especially if you design this wave of this girder that is your tension filled method that's all okay so i have just tried to help you to visualize this tension filled method and the basic thing of this method how it is related to your basic beam and truss that's all okay nothing more nothing less if you like this video please uh, help other fellow engineers by sharing this okay thank you